Broadcasting from the World Conference Center in Bonn, Germany, Solutions Review is on location at the FME User Conference 2023, the peak of data integration. Brought to you by Safe Software and Conterra. Hey, it's Doug Atkinson, and we are here on location in Bonn, Germany at the peak of data integration event, speaking with a very special guest, Mary Brown, GIS team lead at Swiss Humanitarian Aid. Thank you for coming by. Thank you, thank you for having me. Well, uh, it's a pleasure because the work you're doing is incredibly important and it's also being leveraged by what we're all talking about here, FME. Um, before we get into kind of how you're using the technology, give us a little bit more about, about your job and, and, and the work that you're doing around the world. Uh, sure. GIS has always has been my core um, career line for many years. Um, over 15 years now, I kind of got the FME bug and became addicted. And that changed a few things. Um, and changing to Swiss humanitarian aid as I did in 2017, um, uh, it was a green field basically in, in terms of GIS in many ways. And I had a lot to do, many challenges, and FME was kind of my go-to. And uh, then being involved in crisis, humanitarian crisis, means it happens, you have to react, you have a million things to go at the same time. And the most reliable for me was FME being, I, if I had a problem, I kind of had the belief that somehow FME would help me solve it. Usually that actually worked. Um, and also the community, the whole support from SAFE and ANSER is my local partner, um, key in getting GIS established now at the core of Swiss Humanitarian Aid and we respond uh, globally to humanitarian crises um, where there's been an international request for response and so on. Um, so we have a rapid response team. We have a kind of a, a militia core of, of uh, over 600 specialists in 11 expert groups and they pick and choose the types, the specialities needed and then we deploy. Um, so last year it was Pakistan's floods and this year obviously Turkey, Syria and uh, we're currently in Greece um, responding and helping with the firefighting. Yeah, so this is um, you know, a story we hear over and over again with regard to uh, you know, climate change and crisis around the world and just you know, natural disasters in general. Um, how you can overlay data to create an efficient response uh, and, and, and a more effective response let me talk a little bit about how you leverage uh, FME to, and data to, 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 to roll into a crisis situation. Well, when an earthquake hits, for example, um, you have to immediately know where the epicenter was, you wait to see where the effective zones were, how strong the, the, the shaking was, you find out where the population is, you bring in boundaries because everyone's talking about admin boundaries, you have to get the current ones because these things change. You have to get the, the place names um, in an alphabet you can read. It's obviously Ukraine and, and uh, such likes, additional challenges. And sometimes FME helps transliterate, trans translate things like that. And there's just a vast amount going on in a very short time in the first phase. So in one sense for the, the, the crisis sellers we have, um, where we make our decisions, I need to be able to show the situation. Um, with my team and also the people that deploy. They take maps with them, they take mobile apps with them, they take uh, data with them sometimes. So there's just a massive amount in a short time from a whole, some known sources, regular, but some, it's always something exotic every time. Well, let's talk about that. Uh, so what is the, um, what are some of the data elements that, that um, can be a challenge? I know you, we were talking last night about some, sometimes the mapping isn't necessarily as accurate from place to place. Yeah, we, I mean, many people, um, especially in Switzerland, if, if their data isn't centimeter exact, they're, they're a bit unhappy. I'm just happy if there's any data. <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole different scale of things. Oh, there's a road. Okay, that's great. Right. There's, a, there's, a, there's a village there. There's some houses. Um, and then that's where the open street map community comes in and fills some of the gaps during a crisis. So that means we're taking the data once, but in, in, in a week there'll be more data. So we have to take it again. And then it, just integrating different layers together. So we obviously have our own 
representatives around the world in the, in the sense of embassies and, and such like. It's nice to see on a map where they are, where the nearest one is. Plus the whole transport, ways in, airports, ports, roads, topography, density of population. Um, and the, and this, is, this is the most amazing thing to me because when we, uh, I think a lot of people think of data as this you know, binary, kind of flat ones and zeros, when in reality, it's very dimensional, mm -hmm. spatial. When you're talking about topography, you're talking about, um, you know, population. Um, we heard yesterday an example uh, in a response to an oil spill where um, they were taking human inputs of we see oil here yep. and then overlaying mapping data on top of those points of observation, so, human uh, observation, digital data, and creating, you know, kind of a, uh, a, a real-time mapping of the, of the spill. Yeah. It's amazing. We do, we use the same technology, for example, for building damage assessments after an earthquake to assess whether you can, the, the building's still safe, it's safe to inhabit, safe to enter. Um, we use the same technology and in the back, back end leverage, get the data with FME and produce reports that we can, for example, hand to local authorities and stuff. It's something we're, we're prototyping at the moment to make it a bit more robust, but it's something we've used for several years as, as well. But the combination of the ESRI world and the FME world are key. Yeah, so, um, so you've been using FME for a while and ESRI for a while. And you've seen a lot of things. Uh, and you've kind of certainly been able to employ it and, and deploy it. I'm curious, um, as you come to an event like this and you see kind of the roadmap of how everybody's thinking about things, and I know there, there's a lot of conversations about where FME is going to go next, how do you think about it? I mean, where do you see um, this sort of data integration progressing? Well, as in... This is classic, I think, for many people, the FME specialist in the organization is often from the GIS corner and they start on their own and then they'll infect their team, I say infect, yeah, um, yeah. and sometimes that can move into the IT. So I think in many cases the whole integration of data from all the different silos into one place, um, it's done for the moment in our organization by typical IT methods without FME, but there is some interest growing. Um, but for me, it's just being able to see where it's going. I know it's reliable. Um, it motivates me always to try, to try new things, um, uh, get an idea of what I need to think of in advance, um, ways to solve the many myriad of problems that I face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's remarkable. I'm curious, um, obviously, I know a colleague presented yesterday, uh, two days ago here. I know you presented last year in Vancouver. Um, what else do you get out of an event like this when you come uh, and travel to, to something like this? Well, apart from little gems out of various presentations, which I need to follow up on, um, speak to people. You, I mean, say for a big help to me in the background um, at distance, and often they know my name and I have actually never met them. So it's nice to actually connect and, and, and speak to them. Um, obviously Dale and Don, but also his whole team of staff and various other specialists from, for example, I met um, some German colleagues from, who were also involved in disaster response assistance. Um, I, I met them and just an exchange on, ah, how do you solve it? And, and being able to meet Ken, Ken Bragg from MSF was also finally a chance to catch up. We have so many similar problems and sometimes just triggering a, an idea. Ah, you do it like that, that kind of thing is key. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so what gets you excited as you kind of progress in your career? I mean, obviously you're dealing with, you know, uh, spontaneous events, I guess. Um, but as you, as you think beyond those and maybe, you, maybe you're not able to, I don't know what, how do you see kind of, uh, where we're progressing in terms of, um, being able to respond to, to disasters? Well, FME is, key to making us more efficient, being better prepared, being quicker in a response, it frees us up to do other things. Like in, at the beginning, perhaps we would spend more time just preparing data, but now maybe the whole data preparation is becoming more efficient, mostly help, mostly thanks to FME and the processes behind it. But that frees us up to maybe do some more analysis or to do 
products that maybe often they're not requested, but it, the, once they see them, they realize what, a, what an assistance is. It, it just frees us up mostly. And I can see, I can see, I can see many things becoming more, yeah, automated, integrated, clean, seamless. Um, and I see that as, yeah, quite exciting really, um, the possibilities that FME gives us. Well, Mary Brown, we appreciate uh, all the work that you're doing. Thanks very much for swinging by today and uh, sharing that with us. Uh, and, and, and obviously, uh, best of luck uh, with all the things that you're dealing with throughout the world. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.